In this video, we're going to take a look at creating databases, tables, and importing data into those tables in the MySQL workbench. So we do assume that you have already installed MySQL server and the workbench software. So I went ahead and fired up the workbench. Next, I'm going to have to connect to the MySQL server. So I'm going to click there and I'm connecting as the root. Go ahead and enter my password here. And once we're connected, we're presented with a, an editor. And over here on the left, you're either going to see administration, or if you've already used the schemas part of this, uh, it will be open to schemas. Okay, so schemas is just another word essentially for database. It is slightly different, but essentially a database has a schema and it consists of the table definitions and relationship definitions within the database. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started and I'll just use the keyword create and then database to create a database and then we'll give the database a name. Okay, so I could alternatively use this syntax schema. All right, but the more general syntax is preferred. And so I'm going to use create database. Okay, and then I'm going to run that. And so we're looking for this, the nice green arrow down here. That means it ran without a problem. And just notice if I try to run that again, I'm going to get this error message. So uh, usually the error messages are pretty good. All right, so this says it can't do it because there's already a database called that. All right, so it will not overwrite an existing database. Interestingly enough, I can delete the database without any problem. I don't have to get any confirmation or anything like that. So it would be drop database and then the name. I run that and yep, it's gone. Okay. So probably a good idea not to leave something like that in your script. I will create it again. And then once we have a database, right, to put tables in that database, we're going to have to first use it. All right. So I run use test. Nothing in here yet. So it kind of makes sense to create a table. And I'm going to show two ways to do it. I'm going to do sort of the less easy way, which is I'm going to define the table using typed syntax here. And then I'll show you uh, just using the wizard to create the table definition and import the data in one step. All right. So to create a table, it's just going to be create table. And then we'll give it a name. So I'll call it stocks. And then we're going to start defining the columns that are in the data. All right. So this means you're going to have to go open the data, look at it to decide Okay, what should the column name be? What kind of data should that be? And so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and find that data file. Okay, so this is the data I'm interested in. And uh, it is called data.csv. And it looks like, okay, we have about a year or so's worth of data here. The first column is a date. And then uh, the data we're storing is the changing price uh, daily for each of these seven securities. All right, so essentially I'm going to have to go into my workbench and define each one of these columns as the kind of data I want to store there. All right, the first one is, is not super easy. I mean, it makes sense that, oh, there are date data types, so why don't I just import it as a date? But definitely uh, my SQL will have a problem trying to import this because it stores dates in ISO format, which is year first. All right, so it's it will be able to convert it later, but it's not so easy to import this as a date. Back to workbench here and uh, we'll call it, and, and I'm going to change the name of that first column. I'm going to call it trade date. Date is a reserved keyword and it'll let me name a column after date, but I think it just makes better sense. It's cleaner if we try to name our columns something other than keywords. All right. And uh, I'm going to just import this as a string. And so I'm going to import it as character data. And a date has uh, four positions for the year, two for the month, two for the day uh, at maximum, and then uh, those two slashes. So we're going to make it a fixed width of 10 characters. And that way uh, we should include all the data. All right. And then next, all we have to do is everything else is pretty much the same, right? It's just a name for a column and then a data type. 
All right, so the workflow is create a table, right? Give it a name, and then in parentheses, start giving it columns. And for each column, you have to define a data type. Next, we'll do the second column, right? And they're all, like I said, the same after this. All right, it was Amazon. All right, it was Google, KPTI. Okay, once we're finished, we're going to close the parentheses. We're going to end with a semicolon. All right, and yeah, there's no real reason to put these on separate lines other than for readability. All right, so rather than having a long line that extends out here to the right, I find it preferable to read it vertically. And once I'm done, I'm just going to execute that line. It ran, so we now have an empty table. And if you want to make sure we have an empty table, let's take a look. The most basic query we have is select star, that means all columns, and then it's it's going to be from, and then the table name. Okay, so there it is, just an empty table. All right, and this result, actually when you run a query, it's called a result set, and this result is an empty set. All right, so uh, we're going to want to now put data in here, and essentially what SQL expects is that you insert data one row at a time. So I'm just going to show you how that would look. So it would be insert into stocks, values, and then those values go in parentheses like this. All right, so this is actually the method that if you download a database from MySQL, it'll have a big insert statement like this with lots of comma separated values. All right, so that is the standard way we're going to use because we have Workbench, we're going to use a wizard that will allow us to import data all at once. Okay, so uh, just notice over here that I did create test, but it doesn't show up. So up here next to schemas, I'm going to click refresh. Okay, and then we have with the database active, it shows us there's something called tables. All right, we know what those are. All right, so I can either hover over test and right click or hover over tables and right click. I'll do that because the shortcut menu is shorter. And I'm going to select table data import wizard. And in the first window, I have to go find the data. So we said it was data.csv and there it is it happens to be on my desktop i'm going to go next and i'm going to tell it to import it into an existing table and you know if that's not the correct table from this drop down list we could select the correct table this happens to be the only table so it makes sense that that should be the right one. I'll hit next. And then uh, we basically get a snapshot of the data that's going to get imported. And then if we have made a mistake in matching up columns with data, we could fix that here. All right, but I did it in the correct order, so I'll just leave it. But just, just so you can see, right, there's a drop down and I could change it if I needed to here. All right, we'll hit next, and then we're just going to hit next to execute, and with any luck, when I hit next again, it will have uh, the number of records. Now, usually what will happen is either you get all or none, right? So it'll tell you it finished it, and then it'll show you that you imported all the data, right, which you may not know how much all the data is, but probably you can check that. All right, or else the alternative you see here a lot of times is uh, that it'll say zero records if there's some problem with that import. Okay, so that happens actually quite a bit when you do what we just did, which was first to define a table. All right, so it actually is easier to just directly import the data, all right, using the wizard and let the workbench sort of def define the data types and define the column names and things like that. All right, uh, let's just take a look at what we got here first before I do that. So I am going to just execute this query again and there's the data. All right, so let me get a little bigger. Um, just kind of note that this looks like a date, just like we're familiar with. But if I was trying to sort on this date somehow, maybe oldest to newest or something, or just extract out everything that happened in January, uh, this date actually is a string. All right, so if I if I tried to sort it, for example, 
right? And uh, let me scroll down a little bit here. Uh, January would be followed by October and then November and then December, just because it sorts alphabetically, or I, I can sort in descending order too, all right? But all the things that start with one are gonna come together, all right? Followed by, right, two, three, four, five, and, and so forth. All right, so it's probably best to recast this data all right, so this happens quite a bit. You'll get data into my SQL and uh, you'll need to change it somehow. All right, so I am going to do that here. And so the way to do it in this existing data is I'm gonna use this update keyword and I'm gonna update stocks. And I'm gonna set trade date, all right, equal all right, and then I'm gonna run a function on it and it's gonna be string, whoops, I gotta spell it right, string to date, all right, and the string to date is in trade date. All right, and then I have to tell it the format that's in there that it has to transform into a date. So that starts with a month, right, the slash, a day, a slash, and then a year. Okay, and just notice that I had to enclose that in quotation marks. Even when you're using a date that's been formatted as a date, uh, you're gonna have to enclose it in quotation marks like that. Okay, so let's see if that works. I'm gonna run that line and we got a green check, so it seems like it worked. Let's run this and see what happened. And there's our date transformed into ISO format. Okay, so uh, let me show you the second method of importing data that I think is a little bit easier. So we're gonna just hover over tables here. We're gonna select data import wizard. And you know we could browse for the data, but I'm just gonna import this again into a new table. So I'll hit next. And then, uh, yep, I'm gonna check this box, create new table in test. All right, and we'll call that table data, that's fine. And then I'm gonna hit next. And here I get to decide what kind of data uh, I'm bringing in. So this is basically similar to that window we were looking at when I had predefined the data, but here I get to choose what kind of data import. So. I'm gonna change this to a date time. Okay, so rather than importing it and then transforming it, I'm gonna get it as a date time. And we're basically gonna do the same thing down here, right? I'm going to tell it the month. I'm gonna, well, essentially I'm telling it the format that the date time is coming in as, okay? The rest of this I'll just leave as is, but you know, if you want, you can select a different data type here. Double is fine. And then I will hit next and we'll see if I can make this work. And again, I got 258 records, so it must have worked. Let's take a look at what this data looks like. All right, obviously we see that that is quite a bit quicker. All right, but uh, let's just take a look at what happened when I imported this. Okay, I did get it as a date, but I got also this time on the end here. All right, so uh, maybe that's okay. Maybe you don't like it. I'm gonna show you quickly how to get rid of that. All right, this happens a lot. We import data and it's nice and easy to do in the workbench, uh, but then we may have to run some other uh, manipulation on it after we import it. So what I'm gonna do here is last time I updated, here I'm gonna alter the table. So one thing for sure is there's more than one way to pretty much do everything in SQL. I could update. All right, I'm gonna alter the table here because I think the syntax is a little bit more concise when I do this. So I'm gonna alter table and it's gonna be data. All right, and then I'm going to change. And even the format of this statement, I could use change or I could use other syntax here. All right, uh, I'm gonna change the date column. All right, cause I don't even really like the name date. So I'm gonna change it to trade date. And you can see that it turns blue indicating it's a keyword for my SQL. All right, so we're gonna trade, we're gonna change the date to trade date. And then I can tell it to turn that into a date. 
which is kind of nice. So let's run that one. We got our green check. Let's see what the data looks like. And there it is. We lost that time off the end. Okay, so that is a quick introduction to creating a database and then uh, making tables in that database and importing existing data into them, which is a very useful thing to know. Okay, so hopefully that helps.